Hello, everyone. Uh, dear Unified Workspace Community members, uh, my name is Antoine Ferraz. I'm a uh, product technologist for Telco Alliances, and today I'm going to take you through to a session uh, regarding 5G and what 5G is actually capable of doing in the world of the new world of work we are currently in. So. This is this is not a uh, small thing, actually, because as you might remember, we went through a pandemic and um, coming out of the pandemic, the way we work has considerably considerably changed. And that is something we must take into account uh, in the way we're going to construct our IT pools, how we're going to man manage them, um, how we're going to connect people together. And if you look at um, what is happening today, we could reasonably say that the, the way we worked has changed for real. Um, we had some kind of a sporadic uh, way of working at the, uh, in, in the pre-pandemic times. I mean, people would probably come um, four days a week in the office and, and sometimes asked to be allowed to work from home. But the thing is right now, um, the uh, hybrid way of working is the new normal and don't get fooled by it it's going to stay this is this is not some kind of a uh, fashion trend or whatsoever this is the way people now want to work and i mean the studies show show it because uh, two-thirds of the companies as you see here are are currently uh, looking at modifying rearranging their office spaces to accommodate hybrid workers that will actually require more meeting rooms. 75% uh, almost uh, of workers say, hey, uh, I, I want flexible uh, or remote work uh, as a standard. And if you look at what is happening in the market, uh, those, those workers who are really making life-changing decisions, uh, you can see that almost 50% of them are, are now saying, hey, if in that job you're offering uh, me or the job I am currently having, there is no improvement regarding flexible work, I might actually consider leaving or not going for the one that you're currently offering me. That, that, is, that is very important uh, for, for the com competitivity for companies. Why? Because when you look at uh, this from the right angle, you will realize that the new challenge is not just hardware, connectivity, uh, software, cloud resources, this is all very important. It's the workforce. I mean, people are what, what the companies are made of. So if you can offer as a company uh, a more flexible, a more attractive uh, workplace, what's going to happen is that you're going to be able to attract and retain talents that you're less invested competitors are not going to be able to get and you will have an edge over them. So it's it's really a, um, a new trend in the market trying to seduce and attract those who are who are the most uh, uh, competent, the most skilled by by giving them a workplace that is uh, fitting their needs and their expectations and that's flexibility. So um, it's 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 also funny when you when you when you talk with people from HR, um, especially when it comes to salespeople, um, customer-facing roles, where uh, uh, the company car were, has been for 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 decades uh, an important point in the discussions, but today it, it is actually the flexible uh, aspect, the work from home policy that took that, that took over clearly. It, it is actually in one of the first questions that that uh, candidates uh, bring up when, when they when they're entering um, discussions for a new position. So one of the uh, major concerns for companies or preoccupations uh, should be keeping the workforce happy, because the workforce. Um, is getting picky and it's no longer accepting to work with tools that are not adapted. If you look at the statistics here, we have roughly only one third of the workers today that say uh, 
hey, my device is perfectly adapted. I'm very happy with the lab we have. And that is actually a consequence dating back to the um, to the uh, rush we had during the pandemic because uh, uh, every company was was uh, dashing to get laptops, no matter which which one it would be, so that everybody could stay connected. We're now a year after uh, those uh, exceptional circumstances uh, have ended, and uh, it is it is time to reconsider the whole strategy. How are we going to move forward and make the workplace uh, ad adapted for everyone and and still keep it productive? That that is the key in in, in the whole approach. Um, what what we also see is that the hybrid move, the moving the 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 workforce outside of the walls and and keeping it outside of the walls most part of the time, uh, brings a whole stack of challenges. That that is that is sure. So of course it's important to provide those end users with a device that they like, appreciate, that fits their needs. This is why at Dell we. We use personas to assess uh, uh, very accurately who needs what, which kind of device. But it is also a big challenge for corporations today to address the situation with new tools of management. And I'm thinking here of modern device management. That is clearly the response to um, a rather static way of, uh, uh, I, I call it, castle style management everybody was within the walls now everybody is outside the walls so modern device management is taking over slowly maybe too slowly and if you need help with this uh your dell representatives will be very happy to help you here but the the ultimate issue that we're facing is the fact that moving the devices out of the company will actually increase uh significantly the surface of uh, of uh, of um, exposure to to attacks. It means that the devices have to stay compliant. They have to stay up to date to make sure they will resist attacks from uh, from hackers, from from crypto lockers. And you can see here the list of concerns that are that are brought up in this uh, CCS uh, survey. I mean, cyber attacks are are, are really a problem today. They're they're going increasingly. And ransomware is is just uh, overwhelmingly present, and we see customers struggling with it for sure. And um, it's um, it's also something where companies will go in heavy in terms of uh, responses to this, uh, trying to protect the devices uh, with, with with solutions that might actually impact. The end user comfort, because what they say is, as you can see here, hey, I'm struggling with those passwords, those logins. Um, I'm I'm running this on a device that doesn't that's slow. And why it is slow? Because probably the hard drive is too old and uh, not made to to handle in full encryption, because full encryption has become the standard. And if your devices in your company are not encrypted, then you should do it. It's uh, coming with BitLocker as a standard. And the last thing they're also complaining about is poor connectivity. Connectivity is is clearly a challenge for many of uh, of those end users. Why? Because hey, they want to work from anywhere, uh, and all suddenly, well, they have to rely on, on 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 bits and pieces to stay connected. So we we agree, security has become a top priority because it it is an urgent requirement to make sure that your your devices that are all strewn across the planet or the country uh, are, are maintained properly. And one of the common beliefs is that virus detection software will, will handle it. Virus, virus detection software is, is one answer, EDR, but it is, it is not the only attack that your devices will be uh, subject to. So um, Hacking is a complete different type of attack, and, and no virus detection software will do this. There are two ways to, to fend this off. Either you, you, go, you go frontal with it, or you might actually just step aside and, and, and circumvent it. One, one important thing that I wanted to point out today, because this is a new trend and completely hitting this, the, the scenario we, we, we're talking of today here, is the drive-by wireless attacks style of hacking. And this is specifically targeted at remote workers. 
What is that? It is it is a way of actually trying to crack uh, Wi-Fi passwords and to uh, get into the systems that are connected to any any given Wi-Fi loop and see if you can gobble up some in, uh, sensitive information from from those end users. Uh, those hackers go so far. I mean, public places uh, like like a cafe, like uh, McDonald's. You sit down in a you know railway station where you get free Wi-Fi. You go to an airport. It's the same. Um, this is where you would expect them. Where we would less expect them is also in apartment complexes where they take advantage of the fact that you're having a consumer router, uh, consumer router in your in your in your home. And you didn't put a strong password on it, and it's easier to crack. And and if you don't believe me, trust me, you just have to check out uh, YouTube. There are plenty of of routines and tools explained in detail how to hack uh, the uh, any any kind of Wi-Fi. And we talk of WPA2 uh, Wi-Fi, which is supposed to be uh, uh, secure today, and it's not. If I give you an example here, uh, let's be really down to earth and pragmatic, and I will give you a solution to this. Um, usually people tend to believe that when they're working over Wi-Fi somewhere, the VPN is a good way to secure their connection. It's true. You're safely connected to your resources. The thing is here, for instance, you have Julie who has uh, a neighbor who makes a lot of noise today because he's maybe revamping his apartment. And she decides to step down and go to the to the coffee uh, 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 shop at the corner. She sits down at uh, at uh, at a table. Excellent Wi-Fi connection. She knows the password. She's a uh, well. She's happy because she knows the place. She has a like a nice cappuccino to her side, and uh, she connects to the internet. She has access to the cloud services over the VPN, web apps. Everything is fine. So we can speak of actually complying with what users want here. Hey, they have user comfort that can work and access their data from anywhere. So they're happy. Job done, mission accomplished. On the other hand, the IT admins uh, of her company uh, were bold and ha have already integrated uh, her laptop in into a modern device management solution. Maybe they have Workspace ONE. Maybe they have uh, Intune from uh, that is included in Microsoft 365, or they have another solution. There are other solutions that are there are plenty of them, but this is a good point. So uh, she will use zero trust to actually make sure um, that she's the right person that connects to the right resources with the right device. Fantastic. The only thing here is that she is running her connection over Wi-Fi public Wi-Fi, and it means that you're sitting in a local network loop with someone else, several people, and one of these people could be a hacker. And that is a problem we don't think of, and if I give you the right metaphor on this, let me, um, let's say you're, you're in a noisy room at an evening event, and someone calls you on the phone, are you talking to that person? What you're saying on the phone is, is not audible for the people around you. So you have a very private conversation like you would have with a with a VPN. Um, but the problem is that uh, someone in the room is a pickpocket and he's currently looking into your pockets, what you have in there, and you're concentrating on what you're doing. Nobody pays attention. That is what this hacker is currently doing. He is doing port sniffing to see if uh, by inadvertence, a port a stayed open, so he can actually infiltrate your system. He is looking to to do a middle a man in the middle attack. He might actually do uh, the uh, address spoofing uh, approach. There are many ways to actually um, crack a PC that you are in a in the same network with. And I'm not going to go through all those uh, different attacks. It's not the purpose here, but you understand that. If you are in a public Wi-Fi network somewhere, the chances that someone malicious actually would sit in that same network with you and 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 is looking at what you're doing uh, and tries to steal information from you or just to implant a, a ransomware on your on your PC to harm your data your data is a possibility. So the answer to this is either I ramp up on security and it's a good thing to do, by, by anyway, by by all means, because because we will end up always 
sometimes to connect to public Wi-Fi. But you can actually start by bypassing all this risk here by adding a 4G connection to your laptop. If you have an embedded module, it's perfectly integrated with the laptop. You will be on a separate connection that is very hard to crack and that will give you high-speed access to the internet. It's a hassle-free, easy, easy to connect uh, option that you can add to your, to any PC. So the path to 4G and 5G as a solution to security issues, to management issues, and connectivity uh, connectivity issues is interesting. It is worth looking at it because for sure, the way we work has changed and uh, that's gonna stay, we can't get around that. Um, since the pandemic, corporations have been struggling to, to keep everything under, under control. The security risks have exploded, literally. Uh, I mean, the surface of exposure have grown, uh, the number of attacks have grown, there are intrusions by the thousands, there are um, the people that are sending out tons of crypto lockers every day, phishing attempts of all kinds. So uh, th this is something we are aware of. And one of the smart moves to do is, is, for instance, to move to modern device management. That will bring every device that is out of the house under control. Uh, it will uh, restore a certain user comfort and also make accessing the resources pretty sure and safe and, and make the, uh, the end users happy in, in the way they are connected because it's transparent. And, and it's working, generally speaking, very well. The only thing that we don't have here is this enormous, uh, tremendous uh, versatility in, in the places where you can connect. And that is, that is given by 4G and 5G. And that will, by nature, block off. Uh, what, actually, it's not even blocking off. You, you're, you're going a separate path than the mainstream because you will connect to your data over an independent, really hard to attack and crack connection that is mobile broadband. It is it is encrypted by 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 nature. Um, you can work from almost everywhere. It's a proven solution. You have excellent coverage in most of uh, uh, modern countries uh, regarding uh, 4G. 5G is expanding and it is clearly uh, a, the best way today to make sure that your IT services are able to send you updates as soon as they are available and to make your PC technically future proof because you're already in, in the trend and going with the flow, offering the best possible solution to your, uh, to your end users. By the way, if we ask IT DMs what they think of uh, always connected PCs, Y1 enabled PCs, 5G PCs, call them however you, you, you like. Those advantages are, I mean, the top three are security, faster internet access, and of course, better support uh, for mobile workers, no matter where they work from. So you see it's there. It is really what, what people are looking for when you talk about flexibility, work from home, because they will look for uh, being able to work from anywhere and only a Y1 connection will be able to, to ensure this. And since it's secure by nature, it will improve also uh, the satisfaction of the internal IT department because they know that those end users will connect over a secure connection and add the VPN on top of it. And there's no one else in their back uh, who is trying to hack their PC meanwhile. So if we summarize what we just saw here, um, you've understood that there are challenges and that there are solutions. And there are a few ones I didn't list here. I mean, we went through uh, connectivity issues, uh, the update, the need for, for easy OS updates. Uh, we went through uh, security compliance, um, the necessity to be capable of updating systems. Uh, we easily, uh, and, and from anywhere, uh, we, we have those, connectivity hassle issues, because when it comes to ask for a Wi-Fi password where you are, when you have to go through the registration process, that is that is kind of a pain, uh, especially when you are in big locations like airports, you have screens and screens you have to go through. 
Um, when you have to connect your phone to your PC, sometimes it doesn't work. You want to do it over a cable. You want to do it over Bluetooth, over Wi-Fi. It's it's draining the battery. Um, then you have those rogue network exposure risks. Um, you have issues uh, with the productivity because all this impacts your comfort. And and there are two things we didn't mention here is that, hey, OK, we got all those points, but I can give my end users uh, a nice 7000 series because it's expensive. And on top, mobile data is expensive. Hey, mobile broadband data costs a lot. The good news is it, it's costing less and less because it, we saw that in many, many regions in the world, there are now um, uh, data plans available with unlimited data access, or you get 100 gigabyte or, or or 500 gigabyte for 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 good money, and that is the current trend. Why? Because 5G is coming, and 5G will actually increase and and uh, tremendously the the quantity of data people will consume. So if if the bandwidth is there, don't worry about the prices. Prices are going down. When it comes to the cost of the systems. Nobody says you have to invest in those systems up front. Uh, think of PC as a service that can include everything. PC as a service is a modern way of, of giving the right tools to your end user while not impacting the company's finance financial resources. And then all the other points you mentioned here, hey, you're going to you're going to be able to attract with those assets uh, the most able workers in the market. That is definitely meaning something. It's important for your comp comp competitivity and um, the satisfaction will make uh, also other people's uh, flock to the same place saying, hey, in this company, we're getting optimal flexibility, organizing your work, you get the best devices and you can definitely work from anywhere because you, you get integrated 4G or 5G in, in your platforms. So you should definitely think about this. And Looking at the future trends, I think it's necessary not to underestimate the potential of Y1 and 5G in particular. Why? Because if you look at the charts here uh, by IDC, you can see that it's forecast that, that connected notebook shipments will, will actually take off very strongly next year. We are currently at the uh, um, at a turning point. 22 was the, the year where 5G started to pick up, and 23, 2023, next year, will be definitely the year of, of 5G. So the question is, do you want to join uh, um, and jump on the train and, and invest in future-proof platforms for your end users, or will you give it another year uh, and see if, if investing in, in uh, this, this future-proof technology makes sense a little bit later on? This is why PC as a service is a good alternative because it gives us access to almost every platform and, uh, and a very interesting way of financing it. So the future is here and um, the forecasts are all pointing in the same direction. It's going upwards. So 5G will be the solution from here to 2027 with an expectation of almost half of all subscriptions being already under 5G. Maybe you can summarize what we just saw uh, in terms of benefits for the company um, you're, you're pro working in or for your customers, your internal customers also. 5G or 4G uh, at the current stage. I mean, 4G LTE is pretty pretty performant and will allow you to do webinars from anywhere. An AC PC, an always connected PC, is something that will provide comfort to your end users. It will be improved through uh, all around anywhere connection. You will have the optimal security. You will be able to manage it. And one point here is very important, it's the support. When you have a uh, a Y1 connected PC, it is it is much easier to actually solve issues like a software bug, an app bug, or whatsoever, because you can join that person that is in trouble almost from anywhere. She, she doesn't need to sit connected to some cable uh, connection or a, a robust Wi-Fi connection, a safe one. 
she can she can be uh, reached out to right over her uh, mobile broadband connection and the problem can be solved in the field. This also contributes a lot to the end user satisfaction and will make your, your uh, collaborators much more loyal and, and, and stick with the company. If you look at Dell's uh, lineup in terms of products, and this will be my, my last slide here, is, is just to give you an insight on what's going on um, on, on Dell laptops. We launched our first 4G enabled laptop or first ACPC in 2014. That was a 7240. Today we are we are lining up almost every platform with mobile broadband. We're leading in this in the segment, and um, we have already five platforms that are available with 5G. Next year we'll bring a lot more platforms with 5G, and this will be an ongoing trend because 5G will ultimately take over in the coming. A couple of years. So, if you have any specific project of refreshing your your uh, devices, have a look at uh, at the Dell lineup uh, and check if investing in a future-proof platform would make sense today, especially with PC as a service and modern management. Thank you for listening. I hope this little presentation was helpful for you, giving you a new uh, angle on what's going on in this new world of work and how we can actually mitigate the uh, security risks and, and productivity issues with 5G and 4G on always connected PCs. Thanks and see you soon.